Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie London and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about something that I think a lot of writers will face at some point in their writing journey, whether it happens before you get published or after, and that is dealing with criticism. So criticism is something that can be really, really hard to deal with when you're putting your work out there, particularly in the beginning. Um, it's very difficult to deal with anything that doesn't come back as being very positive. So criticism can be a lot of different things. It can be constructive and it can actually be a really helpful tool in helping you improve your writing and your craft but it can also be something that can really kind of shatter your confidence and um, stop you from doing the things that you love. So there's definitely two types of criticism out there and it can come from many different places. So it could be in the form of a critique that you've received from another writer, whether published or not. It could be from your critique partner if you have someone that you work with closely to look at your writing. It could be solicited or unsolicited, so depending on if you've entered a competition and you've received feedback that's not overly positive, um, or if you're self-publishing or traditionally publishing and you have a book out there um, you might receive criticism from readers and reviewers so it could come from a lot of different places and I think that um, what I'm really going to be talking about here in this video is criticism that um, that you're struggling to deal with. So sometimes um, you might receive a criticism and you look at it and think, oh yeah, actually that's valid. I can see that in the writing and it's not a problem. This is more if you've kind of looked at the criticism and you're feeling upset and you're unsure how to deal with it. Um, these are a few tips that hopefully will help you to get back in a more positive headspace and to make sure that criticism doesn't derail the progress of your writing. So the first thing that I recommend is just stepping back. I know sometimes when you receive something that's not overly positive, there can be an immediate desire to kind of lash out or to try and correct the other person um, or to say, no, that's not true. My writing is good or whatever it might be. Um, and I think that acting in that moment of um, emotion is not always the best thing. So I definitely recommend just you know, closing your laptop or, you know, shutting that email down or whatever it is that you need to do to step away from the situation, um, just to have a moment to yourself and just to kind of calm down and make sure that when you are reacting that you're not doing it in the moment, particularly if it's online because the internet never forgets a thing. So um, just make sure that when you do respond to criticism that, um, that you're doing it with a little bit more of a clear head. If you're in a critiquing um, sort of face-to-face -face environment, that can be a little bit harder. So I definitely recommend if you are feeling emotional, um, just tell the other person that you um, would like to digest what they've given you, the information they've given you, and go outside and just, you know, take a deep breath, get a glass of water or coffee or whatever it is you need, and just to kind of um, allow yourself a bit of time by yourself to process that information. The next thing that I would recommend doing is asking yourself if the feedback is constructive or not. So there is a big difference between constructive feedback uh, or constructive criticism and um, non-constructive criticism. So an example of both of those might be that um, a constructive criticism might be that the opening of your story is slow and it has too much backstory and it needs to be kind of refined and trimmed to capture the reader's attention. Non-constructive criticism might be that someone has said your writing is crap. So it's not really helpful, it doesn't actually tell you where the problem is, it's just a hurtful kind of comment as opposed to something that can actually help you improve your writing. So I always think that it's important to look at the intent of what the person is um, saying. Are they trying to help you? Are they genuinely giving you something that they feel will help you improve your your writing or are they just trying to be mean-spirited that will help you determine how best to respond to the criticism and whether or not it's even worth responding because my general view on kind of non-constructive criticism is that it doesn't warrant a response it's not worth your time or energy to respond to someone who's just telling you that your writing is crap because that's um you know it's not helpful and you don't need to engage with someone like that so definitely look at the meaning behind it Think about, is the, 
the criticism that you've received consistent with other feedback that you've received in the past because constructive criticism can also be a great way to identify some problematic areas in your writing so if there's this the third or the fourth time that someone has said mate the opening feels a little bit slow or there's too much backstory then you know that might be a good indication that that's something that you might want to work on as part of your editing process or you may want to look at taking a course in creating snappy openings or read some articles it can actually help you to guide your self-learning and the activities that you do to improve your craft and then what you're actually doing is taking something that's um, a criticism and turning it into something really positive because you're using it to improve the way that you write. I'm a big fan of talking to people about things so if you've received a criticism and you're not sure how to deal with it you're not really sure what the intent of the criticism is or you're feeling really hurt by what the criticism is I would just find someone that you trust to talk it over with. Um, now for that I have a couple of people in my life, my husband is really great for that, uh, I talk to my mum a lot and uh, critique partners and people that I trust within the writing community and early on I had a, um, a competition entry that um, I had submitted through a writing body and the feedback was really bad and I was absolutely shattered when I got that. And I really needed to kind of talk that through with my husband because it was, you know, really a big dent in my confidence. And, you know, having someone else look at that objectively and say, oh, well, hang on a minute, maybe, you know, what they mean by this isn't you're taking it personally when it's not meant to be personal or it's actually not that bad. Um, it can be great to get a second opinion on that um, rather than you who's in that kind of emotional state looking at it and taking things personally. Sometimes, you know, it's good to have that objective eye. I always think it's important to stop and if you're having a hard time to stop and think about why you're writing. Is it because you're passionate about writing it something that you really want to do with your life? If so, don't stop because someone's criticizing you. You keep going. It's important that you kind of have that strength of, um, of understanding of your purpose and what it is that you want to achieve with your writing. If you're writing for pleasure, then don't worry about the criticism. If you're writing for publication, take what you can from the criticism, learn and keep growing, but don't let it stop you. It's really important, especially when you're starting out, that you kind of keep hold of that idea of what it is that you want to achieve because there'll be a lot of bumps along the way. It's unfortunately criticism is very much a part of what we do. As, as authors, we receive it from all different angles at all different times. And I'll be honest, it never really stops. Um, I was going to include kind of dealing with bad reviews in this video, but I think I'm actually going to make a separate video on that because it's a slightly different kind of topic. Um, but it, it doesn't stop. And I think that at some point you have to realize that it's going to, you're going to keep getting criticized and people are going to, not everyone is going to love what you do. And the second that you make peace with that, it becomes a lot easier to deal with those things as they continue to happen through your career. So I would always think about, you know, even if you have to write it down and stick it on your wall near your desk, why are you writing? What is What are you hoping to achieve? And is it worth giving that up because someone has said that they don't like your writing or they've said something negative about it? I can guarantee that most of the time the answer will be no, it's not worth giving up. So, um, you know, any little reminder just to kind of suck it up and keep going is always a good thing. And last but not least, this is probably the trickiest out of all of the, the tips, is just to try really hard to build a belief in yourself that your writing is good and that you will be able to get published or that you will be able to self-publish or whatever it is that you want to do, that you will be able to achieve it. Because if you have that own negative voice in your head all the time, that's only going to be compounded when someone else gives you criticism so you need to really try and I know it's hard I struggle with um, self-doubt a lot myself and have done over the years you really need to try to feel that you're going to get there because if you don't have that belief to cling to when things get tough it can be a, a very lonely and isolating journey as a writer so I I don't really know how to tell you how to do that it's a very personal thing it looks like self-belief is different for every person but if it's just saying to yourself that, you know, I know I can get there, talking to people that you trust and, you know, maybe when you're starting out and you're looking for feedback, go to those people first, the people that, you know, might be a little bit more gentle with you and then slowly branch out 
from there. Um, you know, throwing yourself right in the deep end sometimes is not always the best idea, especially if you are a little bit more on the sensitive side. Um, I did that when I started um, kind of getting to the point where I decided I wanted to get my work published. The first person I showed my manuscript to was my mum because I know that she would pat me on the back and say, that's lovely, dear. And I needed to hear that at the start. And then I started, you know, taking pieces to a critique group that I was a part of and I found a partner who I could trust to be honest with me. And then I started entering competitions and approaching editors. So, you know, you don't have to do it all at once. If you think that it's going to be a bit of a scary experience, just baby steps, but keep moving forward. Don't don't let the fear of criticism stop you from doing what it is that you want to do. So I hope this video is helpful. Um, it can be a little bit of a, a hard topic to talk about and I think that it's important, at least for me, that as the whole writing journey is as much about the emotional and mental side of things that it is about actually getting words down on the page. So I will probably continue to do videos on both sides of the fence. Let me know, is there something that you enjoy talking about? If you have any other tips to share with other writers, please leave them in the comments below because it's um, having this kind of dialogue can be really helpful when writing at times can be a kind of a, a lonely um, thing. I want to, you know, put a bit of the social back into being a writer by creating these videos and um, generating a dialogue with you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want updates for the latest video and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!